which became the second form of verification. Gotcha. So what happened there was we actually did a test. So he sent me off a text message. And when I went to relog back into my email, I just simply had to put in the code that was in that text message. Okay. And then basically at that point, uh, the authentication basically validates uh, the device that I'm on to the system so that okay. any any future time that I log in, it just asks for my regular password. It's already authenticated me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I just want to make sure that that stuff like that will follow me up real quick. <laughs> yeah. If you stay logged in all the time, you, you'd never see it until you log out and then you'd go... When you went to go back in again, it'll ask you. You'll see that little, probably that little message, yeah, that I started seeing last week. And Jack ended up doing the authenticator step. He actually downloaded an authenticator app and did it that way. But so there's a couple of different ways it could. Okay, could so that that is something I should probably take care of then. Yeah, it'll it'll kind of take care of itself. It was at a point I think it's gonna it's gonna force us to do it. Yeah. Um, and Lonnie, in that last email, I mentioned that uh, Lonnie is going to send out uh, a doc, a doc to everybody, okay. an instructional document to all the uh, town email users. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I, I would hate to get logged out unintentionally, and then right. not be able to get back in. Yep. So. It gives uh, you the opportunity, at least initially. I don't know what the count stands at now, but it gave you the opportunity to skip it. It was for a period of like 13 days last week. Okay. It, it was a countdown. All right. So I think we're still in that countdown period. Okay. So you could skip it and then you'd be okay. Yep. Either that or I'll get one of my daughters on it. There you go. <laughs> All right. I think it's uh, about time. So I'll uh, I'll I'll uh, be quiet. All right. Yeah. I'm uh, on the phone with Joyce right now. She's having another login issue. So give me a couple of minutes. Sure. Greetings to all our guests out there. Hey, Tom, I see you on the video. How you doing, bud? Yeah, I'm a little under the weather uh, the past few days, so. Oh, sorry yeah. to hear. Yeah. It's been like, a, I feel like I've been out for over a month now with everything going on. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. yeah so, sorry to hear about your dad. I, uh, I lost mom my mom in august oh uh, so, uh i i know what you're going through and unfortunately too many of our peers uh seem to be going through the same thing over the last few years yeah i know i just um i i didn't realize you know how much it would affect me it it really it really uh hit me hard um and i appreciate all the support i've received so thank you guys very much i uh, appreciate it very much um Great guy, just I only have wonderful memories, you know, just uh, so I'm going to continue celebrating his life. It was just fantastic to know they have like good friends out here. So, yeah, my uh, my my sister and I try to get together for about four hours every week because we're cleaning out mom's home, the house that, you know, we grew up in and. Uh, all these things that we thought were just stacks of clutter as we're going through them. It's amazing what she saved um, and how dedicated she was to her employer. Um, all these little articles that she clipped. Um, it's almost like I'm learning, to, even though I, I thought I knew her. I mean, I had her for 60 years. I'm, I'm learning so much more about her. Um, going through all the things that she said. It's uh, different. I, I know I'm going to go through the same thing when, you know, my mother keeps um, all her grandmother's old furniture and stuff. You know, it's like... I've been telling her to get rid of it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get rid of it when that happens. Yeah, it's um, I, I like I said, I told my my sister from the very beginning. I said we're gonna we're gonna learn a lot going through this. Uh, and fortunately, you know, th th there's two of us to work on it. Um, my brother's in Florida, so he's a little bit out of the picture just because of where he lives. But at, at least you know, there's two sets of shoulders to kind of 
get through all the things that we have to get done. Uh, yeah. So it, it makes a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have some good siblings too. Yeah. Good, good. There she is. You're on mute, Joyce. This is the only thing meeting I haven't been able to get on, and it's just recently because I do Zoom all the time. It's just like I, I'm thinking that you guys don't want me. That's <laughs> not true. Totally untrue. <laughs> okay, so well, before before we begin, I do have an introduction to tonight's remote meeting. This open meeting of the Men and Board of Health is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's updated guidance on holding meetings pursuant to the act extending certain COVID-19 measures that was signed into law on June 16, 2021. This act includes an extension until March 31st, 2023 of the remote meeting provisions of his March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The order allows public bodies to be entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. For this meeting, the Men and Board of Health is convening by video teleconference as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public meeting may join. This meeting will feature public comment. The time is now 6.37 p.m. and I will hand it over to the chairman of the board, Alan Greenberg. Thank you very much, Jack. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, my fellow board members uh, for participating. I uh, appreciate all the effort you put into uh, getting to all our meetings uh, and to all the people that have uh, dialed in. Um, thank you also for taking an interest in what we uh, what we do. Um, so with that, we'll uh, go to Tom Ryder, our uh, uh, Town Wonderful engineer. engineer. That's right, our town engineer, <laughs> and we'll talk about uh, 46 Oxbridge Road. Uh, yes, I think uh, someone from Civil Site is on line two. Margaret, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Right. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, yes. okay. So this is a, um, a local upgrade which involves uh, proximity to a property line. Um, so for, this is for our tight tank. Um, so um, notification to the abutter uh, needed to be uh, before we act on this. Um, so I assume that the abutter has been notified. I, I notified the abutters on both sides just to play it safe. Okay, good. Do you want to go ahead and explain what's going on here? Um, this is like the plan has been approved, but it's got to be, you know, discussed a little bit so sure um yeah, for the record my name is margaret bake and i'm the engineer owner of civil site engineering and uh i'm here tonight uh, requesting uh approval for a tight tank at 46 uh oxbridge road and it's the house uh right next to uh you know where the imperial uh has those classic cars exactly and it's, it's yep. right yeah, right to the right of that, there's a uh, an existing three bedroom house right there with a cesspool right on Nipmunk Pond. And uh, so there's the really, the, the only place we can put anything is right underneath their existing driveway. And we were gonna try to put in a, a conventional system, but because the amount of ledge we ran into, it just wasn't gonna, wasn't gonna work. So we, we're, we're down to a 3000 gallon uh, tight tank. H20 tight tank because they'll be parking on it. Should we share the um, plan so they can see? Uh, yeah, hang tight. Okay. 
Yeah, I, I actually have a copy in front of me. I do as well. Do you need me to share it? You could if you wanted to, Margaret. Unfortunately, sure. I'm slacking. I don't have a copy. There we go. Can you yeah, see yeah. it okay? Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So so here's uh, our house right here, existing three bedroom. Um, here's their gravel driveway. We conducted three different uh, test holes uh, in the summertime. And, and this one over here, we're right at ledge. These two weren't too bad, but I, I still wouldn't be able to get a, a system in there without encountering some type of ledge that have to be hammered. And then like I, uh, and then it would, a conventional system would be somewhat raised and then they have to park on this and it just got to the point where it just wasn't gonna work. So we, we're, we're back to a tight tank right here in front of the house underneath the gravel parking lot. Uh, Margaret, this is Joyce Gilmore. Uh, I'm wondering where the uh, well is on 48. Uh, the well's right here. No, the, the, the well on the, pro the next door property. I, I believe they share this well. Oh, they do. That's interesting. I think they do. If not, then it's this cover right here. And I can confirm that. Yeah, I just was wondering. Yeah. <laughs> And, and their existing uh, existing cesspool is is uh, I saw that yeah over there right right, right in the front there right and and I I am keeping the um, the tight tank uh, fifty feet away from the well yeah I saw that too yeah good now uh, when when you when you do this for them do you give them what uh, their requirements are to keep the tight tank uh, good and to make sure that they have it pumped and get the records and all that stuff. Is that something that you do? Well, I have the whole the whole long list of the tight tank requirements over there that most people don't really read. But right. what typically <laughs> what happens right off the bat is um, the, the contractor who's installing this also has a pumping business. And what he'll do is he'll get them on a regular pumping schedule. Okay. And then once they once they they monitor it a few times, they they get a feel for how often it's going to have to be pumped. Plus, obviously, then then they have the alarms and everything else on there too. Correct. Yeah. So I would be I would be interested in where the if if there is a second well there on that property. The yeah. Next, the next door property. I just I just you know I just. Sure. No, no, that's a good question, and, and I haven't. I, and to, to be honest, I think it's a shared well, but I'm not exactly sure. So let me get that information, and I can forward that over. Great, thank you. Yep. It will require um, a deed notice too on on the record. Okay. Tom, any questions? Tom Fickner. Uh, curious, Margaret, who's the installer? Uh, ADC Septic out of Blackstone. Okay, thank you. Yep. Now I'm fine with what's being proposed uh, as long as from an engineering perspective, if Tom is good with uh, what he sees and the layout and the plans for it. Yeah, just reconfirm that. I think I saw some information that it was a shared well, but just reconfirm that, Margaret. Like, sure, I will. Like Joyce was asking. Yep. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to get that, and I'll, I'll forward that along uh, to uh, you and um, Jack. Thank you. Yep. All right, and, and Tom Ryder, did you mention uh, deed restriction? No, uh, deed notice. Deed notice. I, I, yeah, I meant deed notice if I said restriction. No, no, I probably yeah. took that and, and made that up myself, but I wanted to uh, confirm. Thank you. Anybody from the audience have any questions on this uh, situation at 46 Oxbridge Road? All right. Uh, can I have a motion, please? I make the motion that we accept this as read, as long as the criteria that we've asked for is given to us. 
I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Tom, aye. Alan, aye. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Margaret. Yep. All right. Well regulations review with Tom Ryder. Okay. Um, so I saw the most recent um, um, what is going to be a, a state legislature uh, is looking at um, is looking at putting in private uh, wells. Uh, I think Joyce sent that over recently. Yeah, that was. Um, uh, I'm on the the Worcester Foundation board, and uh, I get all that information. I thought it was really interesting that they were doing the same thing that like we're doing, you know. Yeah, so it looks like um, it looks like they want to add some similar um, requirements that we have as far as um, you know the transfer of property. Um, I think it's still in the uh, early stages of, right. of become you know for the act. Um, so, so I think it'd be interesting, and you know I think it'll also help out a lot of the communities. Um, especially because we have, you know, questions on, you know, what to test for. Um, last time I asked the DEP regarding um, should they be, in, you know, should be looking at PFAS for testing, and they said hold off on that right now because <laughs> uh, they're still trying to figure out the guidance themselves. So, um, so I was saying that. Um, I think that is still kind of like up in the air as far as I think it's good to know the areas that might have uh, PFAS concerns and just to have a, have it as a you know public information. But um, um, but as far as um, you know what what's the D, where's the DEP going to go on this? Um, I haven't uh, taken a look in, a, in quite a few months, so um, they're still um, they're still uh, determining guidance at that time. So, um, I have no, I don't have that much more information on where we left off last time. Um, we were on section two on semi um, determining semi public water supplies. Hmm. Uh, does everybody have like the latest? Yeah. Here we go. farmers who want to keep their land in agriculture and maintain productive farms to help guide business and residential development to shape Menden's growth avoiding sorry I hear a little feedback yeah I wasn't sure where that was coming from okay probably someone's got their microphone on as they're reading it <laughs> okay all right um so I, I think we're kind of um, up in the air regarding section two on uh, semi public water supply uh, issues. Uh, 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 definitions, any water system serving or intending to service water for uh, human consumption or domestic purpose and not included under the definition of private water supply. Um, I kind of need to revisit that on how is this going to be handled. Um, this is, um, I think, uh, Ashland Board of Health Regulations has has a uh, has a similar definition. Uh, these are for like uh, for wells that are pro maybe for more for condos that are under 26 uh, service connections, um, but it doesn't really uh, define what the changes are, the the differences are in the uh, on the requirements. Uh, perhaps there could be a, um, you know, more of a acknowledgement of, you know, who's, you know, who should be uh, providing testing information uh, when a transfer of property comes in to be. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, 
So, uh, Tom, are you thinking that we should have a number uh, associated with that that um, section? Um, yeah. So, it, um, indicate what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then we can go into more uh, in a, a future section of, of, you know, actually I did add on the requirements for the private wells, semi-public wells, Serving more than one dwelling are prohibited unless it can be shown that okay. Um, this section that you're looking at right now, um, we were discussing this, this was about a year ago. We were discussing this as far as how to handle um, how to handle drilling wells for um, for multifamily houses. Should it should they re be required to have individual wells per the unit or sh or should it be like one well combined i thought at that time um we were discussing the the uh importance of each homeowner whether it be a multi unit dwelling like a duplex or a triplex uh, to have control of their own well. Right. Um, so I think if I remember correctly, that's kind of how we were or the direction that we were heading in um, to avoid the, the ambiguity uh, where you have one well serving uh, two, three, or four units in one building as to who had the responsibility um, to uh, maintain and repair the, the well. Yes. Um, so I, I thought, like I said, I, I thought that was the direction that we were heading in as to allowing each dwelling owner to have control of their own private water supply. That's just the way I remember it. Yeah, <clears throat> that's that's uh, that's what I recall too. So I mean that kind of um, semi-public wells as shown, also known as private wells serving more than one dwelling are prohibited unless it can be shown that not permitted would be manifested in just um, and, and must meet the same private wellhead protections uh, in sections, uh, C section seven. And se section seven is for variance procedures. Each well shall be on, located on the same lot that the facility that it serves. Right. Okay. So we're, we're allowing for um the situation where separate wells for for units aren't possible we're we're allowing for that uh under under uh special circumstances yes yeah and in that in that situation it would almost be like uh some of the developments we have where they have a shared septic system each party has to be aware of what their responsibility is within that shared system. Okay. I'm writing this down. <clears throat> yeah, so that, that would, you know, have to be spelled out if a separate well per unit was not possible. Okay. And I'm going to assume that would have to be um, 
noted on the deed to the unit in some fashion. Yeah, it would have to be, um, you'd have to go meet, uh, meet before the Board of Health uh, to discuss, okay. which I think is, um, I think it's good to have the, the, the Board aware of these uh, uh, circumstances. Um, so it's not just an office approval, it's, it's you know, it's more of an office, you know, Board of Health, um, uh, the Board itself uh, approval, right? Right. Okay. I um I see uh, Tisha is on the call, and I know she has a real estate background. Um, would you like to comment, Tish, on uh, this particular section? Did you uh, see her? text i did not she said that was a direction and had reached out to other professionals opinions in this regard the opinion was that it should be deeded into the property uh and that outside entity would be provide a service uh the shared expense of uh, for all the owners okay very good so that that actually would be similar to what we just discussed on the plan before us Right. right, very very similar. Correct, yeah. Okay. So that would, it, Tom Ryder, if I, if I address that correctly, then that would be a, a deed notification. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, so, moving on through uh, section three, um, some some of the stuff is kind of uh, very uh, typical word wording you know, regarding uh, just just uh, abandoning or destroying uh, a, a private well. Um, these are also DCR requirements. Um, it's got to be by a certified well driller. So the uh, homeowner or their septic installer can't go and fill the well with concrete and call it a day. Um, it's got to be a well driller. It's a it's a permit. This is a state requirement. Um, this is just. Uh, and, and they're supposed to provide a report too. So there shouldn't be any uh, differences in this. Um, if we can come back to requirements, um, if there's any other requirements, we can just jump down to section four. Sounds good. Um, these are, uh, again, typical requirements. Drill, uh, well drill is licensed and report um, for the construction, application process, um, you know, I don't, I'm, I, I'm not sure if we had a requirement or a policy regarding um, plans. Um, who can who can uh, submit a plan? Um, I know that we had uh, a while back um, requested an engineered plan uh, when applying for a well permit. It couldn't be a, a handwritten drawing with uh, you know hand measured numbers anymore. I don't know where exactly that appears in our existing regulations, but I know that we um, had had a lengthy discussion on that, that it had it required an engineered plan to pull a permit. Does that answer your question, Tom? Uh, yeah, I just don't see it in section four or five. I mean, it could be there someplace. 
Um, okay. So what if what if we say a um, you know as uh, professional engineer or or oh wait here it is for a new repaired replacement. Um, it's got to be stamped and signed by a registered professional engineer or emergency sanitarian. Yep. Um, I'm not sure we would object to a, a professional land surveyor for you know existing conditions information too. Right, I think so. I think that would that would work. Yeah, I believe that came into effect a number of years ago when uh, we were having some wells maybe drilled in the village where it gets kind of tight or on the lake where it gets kind of tight. and It was just um, too close to do it without an engineered plan. Right. Well, and he's talking about a land surveyor, though. Would you yeah. accept it from the land surveyor as well? Um, can they provide a stamp plan? Yes, uh, they typically are doing um, existing conditions uh, property line. Yeah. Um, so their purview is typically not uh, designing, locating utilities. That's usually the civil that does that. But okay. Uh, but if we're dealing with, uh, you know, site restrictions and you know for a well, I I don't see why not because they. They should know the um, they should have all the research too. OK, I, I see no reason to to add that category in. Tom Fickner. No, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, just in looking at the overall outline right now in section four. Are we comfortable with what is there with regard to the um, Expiration period, what we've defined as an expiration period, is that a re reasonable? Are those timelines reasonable? It would be uh, section 4.5. I think that's very reasonable. I I do too, because, you know, because, you know, for Wells, um, you know, I, I think this, you know, if, if we're having an emergency, that it should be done like right away. Um, and if um, you know if it's part of a if it's part of a sub uh, subdivision plan where you know you know things can move around as as a whole development's being constructed, they might have to change their well location. You know they might find a better location or something. So one year is uh, should be sufficient, I think. Well, yeah, and we are giving them a uh, six month extension period. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I think uh, I think that's adequate. Tom, thank you for bringing that up. Sure. All right, so back down on section five. Uh, five point one, number two, we're going to add that category civil engineer. Yeah, land surveyor. Yeah. Land surveyor. Registered land surveyor. Registered. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving along. Um Okay, so skip down to uh, section five two. Um, all known sources of potential contamination. Um, I think that's more of a you know the engineer should should be um, researching this out um, and acknowledge it, you know, maybe in the form of their plan. Uh, not to drill a well where there's, 
you know, the you know, landfill or or, or something okay. else. I think. Yeah, any any of those things would be yeah. like, uh, yeah, not so good. <laughs> yeah, like it's... somebody from the funeral home. <laughs> right. I hate that when it happens. <laughs> Um, I again added, um, you know, the same section as um, private uh, private water supplies should be on the same water as it serves. Reference the uh, message in the law section. Yep. <clears throat> Good. I, think that's um, I want to say this, uh, we had some more lateral distances to take a look at. Um, I did not add that to this section. Uh, we added other well supply head in manure areas. Um, I, want to I want to keep this open ju just in case we have some other information. Okay. Let me... Uh, I'm going to make a note here. Tom, you have something? Tom, yeah, just, just a, a question on that um, last part there, Tom, about uh, the, the added statement for each private water supply system on the same lot. Yeah. I just throw it out. Could we foresee any possibility where a property owner might actually have two lots to find as part of their property, but they're actually considered two separate lots as far as the town's concerned. Oh, so like if they um, have, uh, if they buy two separate lots that are adjoining, that are abutting? Correct. Within six years, um, they, uh, they actually uh, merge. So um, it usually usually takes a six year period. Um, so then, you know, it's defined as one lot. Um, so that's, Are you saying that's, that's something that, automatically that that happens from the town's perspective, you mean? From the from the town's perspective, yeah. Um, especially if like one is in, in non zoning compliance, like it, it's a um, it would be a, otherwise it would be a um, a lot that doesn't have access to a right away. You know. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> if they're separate A and Rs, it, um, um, I, I, I don't think it would merge, but, I, um, but, but they would be zoning compliant. Um, in that case, I mean, I could, I could check into that a little bit more. Yeah, Can I bring it up only because what? actually, um, as a, I, I actually am a property owner that has such a situation. Um, I ex my property is actually defined as two separate lots as far as the town amendment is concerned. So they're, they've been identified separately right along ever since I've owned them um, from a you know, tax perspective. Okay. Um, and actually, in my case, um, you know, they, the secondary lot that I have um, is considered uh, unbuildable. At the moment, yeah. as far as the definition of the town is concerned, how they define that that particular lot. So I actually have my well is actually on my second lot. It services yeah. my house, on the, on it, which is on a different lot. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, I hear, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So um, would he fall into that five year thing? Six. Yeah. Um, I would I would have thought that that would be automatically merged. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah, it's been um, well ever since I've been there. I've been there now 22 years. Yeah. <laughs> That's and it hasn't <laughs> it hasn't changed. Not that I'm necessarily looking for it to change, but it's you know it's never been um, never been you know stated to me that it would have to change. I, and actually, I my neighbor, my neighbor next to me, uh, has the same situation. So they have two lots that make up their property and a parcel uh, which actually abuts my non-buildable lot 
they have a section that is also considered non-buildable. And then of course they have another lot where their house is on. So we have two adjacent lots next to one another uh, that are deemed currently non-buildable. Um, my understanding is it was done way, way back in the day when former builders of the property or former owners kind of got together. They each purchased a, a lot of land because they didn't want to see a, another structure put up between them. They liked the space between the two, the homes. Yeah. And it's just kind of been that way ever since, you know. But buying slivers of property, uh, yeah. I mean, maybe I, I, we would never run into that again with the way things are these days, but. I think that it, it, to me, it seems like it would be to your advantage to have them together so that when, when if you sold it, you wouldn't run into any kind of a hoo-ha. <laughs> You, you, you also bring up another point too, because I've I've seen um, lots that are are sold together that are actually across the street from each other, and they're you know they're um, so it's the same facility, but it's a private road, um, and uh, the lots are just separated by the by the by the right of way, um, but they're on the same deed, so that. That does bring up a, a question. We've we've actually seen this happen too, where the private well was actually across the street, and and the water line ran underneath the road to the um, an existing con um, condition. So I would say that in a situation like that, if someone were to um, fall into that <clears throat> criteria, they would just come before the board. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've seen it on um, a lot of waterfront properties. That situation you're talking about. Yes. Uh, and usually it's the the septic system that ends up across mm -hmm. the street because they run out of room on the uh, water side of their uh, their lot. But yeah, so they you know we we sort of have covered for that where they would come before the board and say you know this is our situation. And then we would, uh, you know, listen to uh, what they have to say and make a decision on, you know, how to help them handle that situation. I think we should tell them to go to the Registry of Deeds and get it straight. No. <laughs> <laughs> How's that sound? <laughs> Tom. <laughs> I ain't moving and I ain't changing. You guys are in for a fight. <laughs> I'm up for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so moving on. Um, so I just, I made some notes on that. Um, uh, so, so the next uh, few sections are, are from previously uh added to the board of health regulations um you know various procedures um you know for uh, off, uh for minimal distance requirements um well construction standards um i reference the uh we reference the dp private well, guidelines, maybe we can add. Uh, Which what uh, number is that, Tom? We're, we're on 5-3, well construction standards. Um, I don't really think there's much that can be uh, upgraded on, you know, changed on this, unless you see something right here. Um, but there is a section on, um, on storage equipment in in yield on section five well pumps and water storage equipment should be selected to ensure that water water supply is adequate a minimum yield of five gallons per minute for four hours is required so a well drillable pump usually usually they pump as much as they can out of the well um, 
and it will average out to five gallons a minute. Uh, but it might start off at 20 and end up at like two um, after four hours. Um, it might be, um, and then um, then then the requirement is an 85% uh, recovery. Um, I don't think I've ever really seen uh, within 24 hours. I don't think I don't think I've seen too often that the well driller goes back out there. 24 hours later to do a test uh, to determine if it's recovered. And if it hasn't, does it does that cause a failure? And I'm not sure how. Um, how significant that. Uh, number is too. Um, I think after um, I think if you can average five gallons a minute for four hours, I, I think. Uh, as long as the well doesn't run dry, I think, um, you know, it should be good for a private well, but that's something I would like to look at. Yeah. So technically, you know, so technically, are we going to require the well drillers to go back out there or have a, um, a spotter go back out there and, and test? Or, or we can up, update this requirement um, so that it's, uh, it makes sense. Any thoughts on that? I mean, can, I can get some more information from other towns on this. See how they. Oh, probably a good idea. I mean, I would say that you know, if you just had the guy from the the drilled the well, you know, they can they can tell. They can just see if it's still working. You know, if it's pumping enough water. But probably a good idea to do that, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, they're usually there the whole day, so. Um, right. If um, if they can do the four hour test in the morning and then um, and then right. in the That's evening, right. Right. Um, after four hours, determine where uh, the percentage of recovery is. Right. Okay. All right. I'm adding that on my list of things to do. Okay. <laughs> right. Looking through the next sections. Um, these are standard in the um, in the uh, DEP's well guidance. Um, They have uh, construction of injection wells. Uh, we we have construction of injection wells uh, for liquid waste disposal shall be prohibited, which makes sense. Um, but I'm also thinking we do not have um, conditions for um, geothermal wells um, and how we're going to handle those. So. So geothermal well is not for um, sometimes you can use uh, sometimes the well driller wants to use the the actual um, water you know part of a water supply or the well and sometimes they want to uh, drill new wells so I think we need to take a look at that um, under this section <clears throat> yeah I would agree it's an up and coming you know, new uh, engineering element that some folks have really taken an interest in. So it should be incorporated. We've had a we've had a, a number of people wanted to be applicants to come and come before us uh, regarding uh, proposals, and we were looking at them, but then they um, decided not to 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 go with it for some reason or another. Um, so I, I didn't want to discourage them. Um, you know, one of the buildings that I uh, work in, um, you know, has, a ge has geothermal wells and it does a pretty good job uh, maintaining the heat in the building. It's supposed to be very efficient. Um, I just don't, I don't know enough about it though to guide anybody. So, but there is um, DEP guidance on this. Um, so, 
I'll add that to the list. Okay. Okay. Disinfection. Um, it, when um, when the well driller does not uh, flush it out enough, you can you can see the conditions that are left over uh, when they do the test. Um, you know, chloramines um, are in the well. Um, but this indicates that they must, you know, add the chlorine solution and leave it there for 24 hours before they, before they do the test. So, I kind of wonder if they're following procedures on that. Yeah, how would we know it? How would we know if they were? Right. I mean, it's, and it seems like it takes two days to, to do. Yeah. Probably have to incorporate it in the application process. So it's kind of spelled out as to what we would expect for a reporting element. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe we can invite a well driller uh, to a meeting if they want to give us their thoughts and procedures on how they yeah how they go about this how they meet the requirements yeah that's a great idea I think if they didn't disinfect the well before they tested wouldn't the contaminants show up in the water test results? Yeah, so so the condition could be that um, you know that they find back you know bacteria in the well if they don't if they don't if they don't uh, <clears throat> disinfect. Uh, but usually it's the other way around where they they disinfect and then they um, and then they sample afterwards. I mean, maybe not. Maybe they don't hold it for 24 hours and then they find that there's. Um, residual chlorine. Um, as like chloramines in, in the well. OK. So it's usually like the other way around. They just like bleach it and then. Then sample. So the disinfectants are what show up in the test results not the contaminants yeah okay yeah the residual right because they're not they're not giving it enough time oh gotcha. they're not either that or they're not flushing it long enough right yeah yeah so in a situation like that do they have to retest uh, as long as it doesn't exceed um you know the, uh, the the you know the levels. I mean, you're talking about parts parts per billion, in some cases. You know, okay. so um, and, and you can tell what it is. Um, you know, left over from the from the chlorine. Uh, so water sampling procedures. Uh, EPA. Uh, so we require. Um, certified laboratory. Excuse me. And um, so this is for so for this section for the well analysis. Um, this is what I was asking our friends at DEP. Like, what what do they think about the PFAS? Um, open up a can of worms, um, or is it something significant that needs to be addressed? Um, um, 
I would reach back out to them to see if they have any more guidance on this. For for our situation, um, we can always go back and um, and amend that particular section. Yeah, uh, you know, there's there's no reason that that one section should uh, hold us up from yeah. uh, you know getting the rest of this work done. Yeah, maybe add maybe add, add some uh, language in there. I add guidance uh, from DEP. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. So initial tests when they don't pass, we have them retest. Um, and then um, Sometimes what happens is like a lot of times uh, I see secondary levels, uh, you know, high con higher concentrations of iron and manganese. Right. Um, when it comes to the point where you know, you know, basically if they put in an appropriate filter uh, to treat the uh, you know any of the sediment that's or the uh, or anything that's in the in the water, iron and manganese. Tech. Right. Yeah. And actually, that's that's what happened to us here. We, I actually on my lot have four wells. Three of them were, uh, you know, just uh, dug wells, and they were all always full of water. The one down to the sidewalk was was like the historic well that people came to forever, but they became contaminated by with salt from the road. Oh yeah, every one of them, and and one of them that the one that's in my studio goes all the way down to the um, the town where the the town well was down on the drinking uh, thing for the horses and stuff was down there. And uh, it was it was interesting, you know, that all I had, I had all those wells on my property, none of which I could drink from by the by the time. So we had to have a um, you know a driven well. So and it, and it damages all the appliances too. Uh, oh yeah, I see. Uh, yeah. I've seen people have to like um, buy new dishwashers at, like every six months because right. and then and, and new. Uh, um, and new you know, new uh, uh, plumbing uh, washing machine. faucets and yeah. yeah, but we have we have a very ex really expensive, very um, high tech uh, filter system, and it get we get we test all the time, you know, especially right. for the manganese and the you know that kind of stuff. All right, I want to add a section in here about add D no notice. Um, treatment re treatment requirements. Uh, I mean, bottom line is, I, I if uh, people are test have high iron, you know, whereas uh, it's it's a pain in the neck. It's it's uh, stains the clothes and and causes right. some issues with the plumbing and stuff like that. If they put a treatment system in, not to um, you know. Uh, fail their well so they can't so they can't have the have the uh, well at all but they need to do something as far as um, put in a treatment and do some sort of deed notice so that the next person knows that they should be either that or or find it you know um, you know keep sampling yeah right um okay so we're on five six now. Uh, how how much do you want to go through this? Uh, you want to complete section five? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So five six water quality uh, minimum of two water samples shall be submitted. Um, so you one at the one during the well installation and the second one. Uh, before occupancy. 
um, I've seen other towns do this and um, and it makes sense. Sometimes they have high concentrations of iron and manganese in the initial test and then they get to the uh, kitchen tap and it's fine. Um, or it could be vice versa, like suddenly <laughs> something happened, but um, but I think this is a good condition to have just 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 right. to make sure that it, you know. It's, yep. So that section was added. That's good. I think that's great. Um, okay, so section four comes into the water quality uh, approvals. Um, so, so if they do, if if they do have a call form result, then they have to. It looks like they have to test twice, um, showing two con successive zero call form results. Um, so, if the um, well driller does find call call form result, then then they'll test again, and then they can test at the kitchen tap for the two successive call form tap. Uh, Results. All right. Good. Yep, I think that's good. Okay. Um, in the past, I have added Uh, to this section, um, so it's not in this regulations, but I had standard typical treatment, selective treatment units to, uh, that that can be employed uh, if there is uh, concentrations of uh, iron and manganese, or you know even volatiles, um, you know activated carbon or some whatever kind of filter. Um, I'm not sure if we are thinking about adding a an appendix such as that or have them just um, try to try to go out on their own and uh, do some research and you know find a selective company like Culligan or something like that that might have a, um, a system that they would sell. The downside of this is that the homeowner could be sold the um, water softener unit when they need um, activated carbon you know right it's, yep so however if we make a recommendation and the recommendation doesn't correct the situation are we in the hot seat yes um right yeah you you won't approve my well now because uh, i i put in the activated carbon unit and it's still it's still a problem right um exactly so that's why i'm kind of having second thoughts about that but we yeah, obviously I, can um, give them uh we we don't give um names of companies but we can give them you know sort of like you might want to try uh looking at um, these type of treatment devices right and I, I think you know a, a verbal conversation with someone that is uh in a situation like that maybe we could suggest what people have done in the past like you know an RO system for high sodium right uh, so we're not we're just you know going from prior experiences that people have had in the community what they have tried um just so that we don't end up in the hot seat uh, it, it, I, you know, again, my my experience with this has been kind of crazed because, uh, you know, we we were having difficulty with the iron. So um, I had a friend that said to me, you know, when I was doing work and stuff like that, you need to call this company. I think it was Advantage. Uh, and they came and they tested every single thing. They looked at the well, they looked at the well housing and, and did everything. And then they came and recommended, you know, put in what 
they said would be good. And we have not ever had a, anything. And they come at every, they come back at every certain amount of time. And I'm not sure what it is, but, and, and check it again, you know? So, I mean, I, I guess that we, we would recommend that they get somebody that, that does that, you know, we don't have to give them a name, but we recommend that they, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I've seen Culligan on my street. Um, I know there was a home that was built four, five, six years ago. Uh, and the builder came to us because the test results showed the board of health that it had a high sodium content and, uh, to rectify it, they put an RO system in, and uh, I see Culligan periodically. They must come to service the system. Right. Uh, but, you know, obviously it's doing what it's supposed to do, and they must have, like you, some sort of a service right. agreement. Right, contract, yes. And, you know, they come back and they make sure that it keeps working. Um, right. Because there are so many things that I, I can remember, again, I, I hate to be talking back in the day, but at, on Blackstone Street, there were quite a few wells that were contaminated with lead. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we and have I a wonder, I wonder if those people do test still, you know, test frequently to see, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we had, we had iron show up after I was here, maybe maybe three years. So we had to put a, we had the, the well company come and they put a filter on to filter out the iron. Right. And usually that does takes care of the manganese because manganese can be very dangerous. Right. Now the yeah. iron is just makes a mess. Yeah. But the manganese can be dangerous. Yeah. They, they come back periodically and they um, change the media. It's right. in the filter. Yeah. Um, and usually when they come, they tell me how long I should wait to call them again based on what they see in the media. Right. Um, I think right now we're running like every third year. They they come back. And uh, mm. it, it, it does the trick. But right. the only reason I went with this particular company was because a friend of mine not too far away in Millville, used them and it worked for them. So I went on a, a friend's recommendation. Right. Because I didn't want to have happen to me what Tom Ryder was talking about, is you say you have problems with your water and they sell you a water softener. And, right. You know, they're, they're down the road. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I did the same thing, you know, went with uh, someone I trusted, went with their recommendation. Right. So, yeah, I would I would say, you know, having a discussion with anyone that's in a situation like that and encouraging them maybe to reach out to their neighbors and see if their neighbors are having a similar issue. And if they are what they did um, would probably uh, be relatively good advice. Yeah, we may even have that information on file, too. Um, you know, if, if, right. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's right. Them. That's right. Yeah, for for the for the newer properties, right? Right. You know anything anything that came into play uh, from '95 on, I believe, is when the regulations first went into effect. Hmm. All right, very good. Let's continue on. Okay. Um, Um, skipping down to five seven well completion requirements. Um, this is part of the well drillers log. Um, so this should be in the log already. Um, so maybe that's something the the well driller can discuss if we have them come in. Right. Okay. Um, so existing wells, um, 
you know, no duly permitted well in existence effective date should be, you know, required to conform, conform to the provisions 3123, which is, I think it's mainly the permitting requirements. Um, so people don't have to go back in and uh, re-permit their well, which makes sense. All right. <laughs> Um, but they would still be required, like if they transfer the property to uh, to do their testing. Tom Fickner. So um, a question on this category with regard to existing because pretty much so far, most of what we've been discussing would be regarding new wells new well construction right uh, and given what we recently saw come through from that health foundation right um, is there any consideration here for including into these regulations from a town perspective any kind of requirements for validating um, the health of a private well on some sort of regular basis for tracking its quality? Um, I think the easiest trigger that we have is during a transfer of property. Um, while you do your septic system inspection uh, to sample the well. Um, yeah, is that yeah, what you yeah. mean? Well, I'm kind of referring to um, getting a you know, from a public health perspective or from a knowledge perspective on water quality for all residents, actually knowing that what's being consumed is uh, is healthy. Um, granted, there's probably folks out there that probably do more regular testing of their wells and than others, but should there be a guideline where the Board of Health needs to have as part of their record keeping um, for residential wells um, for the purposes of tracking water quality and the health of the water um, as you know as things move along? Transfer of property is fine, but I mean you could have what about all the folks where people are in 30, 40 years type of thing, you know? Um, so it's, it kind of sounds like you're you want to set up some sort of a um, um, a requirement, kind of like outreach. You want to set up some sort of outreach to like um, you know ninety nine percent of um, residents and businesses in Menden are on a private well. Right. You know, have you checked your well recently? Do you know where it is? Is is it under a pile of uh, you know trash that you you know that you're discarding? Or, you know, just know where it is. You should have it tested. Make sure you protect it. Don't let anyone do anything with it, and you know, don't drive over it. Um, you know, just you know, we may even have record in the board of health office if you want to come down and take a look um, where it is, and then and um, and this is what we. Uh, suggest you test for and then when you do so send it to the board of health office so we can um you know keep uh keep the whole neighborhood informed if necessary well the out the outreach is you know, a great idea i think we kind of have some information out there for folks to kind of go by I i'm kind of leaning more and I this is more of a a discussion point uh per se in general um is there a, an argument to be made for compliance for a compliance element in this area? So that we as a board of health, we're truly able to monitor and get validation of the water quality that exists out there from the residential perspective and business too. I don't want to single out residential, but um, so that we actually know we have statistics, we have you know, confirmed information that 
wells are operating correctly and water quality is what it should be. Is that the responsibility of the BOH? Basically is what it's coming down to. Is that something we think we need to consider or it's a, it's a tough question. Yeah, it, I, it, I, it is, it is, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, I, I think it would be, I think it would be very difficult to do. I mean, I, I think that, I think that it's incumbent upon us to uh, let people know how important it is and, and that sort of thing. Um, uh, again, it's, uh, you know, it's, and, and, and when, to, even with transferring property lately, I mean, I know so many people who they they bought the property with to with the people and said we don't care about the testing we don't care if it just that you've got to set we don't care about this we just want to buy the house this way we're going to forego all um inspections right uh, you're right uh, it, it you know it does exist is that uh you know and i'm not i'm not trying to be the i'm not trying to be the thumb that is trying to press down on, 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 on people per se, but um, to sometimes uh, maybe some folks don't always know what's good for them. Right. Right. Um, and I'm not trying to put a financial burden on a resident or a business for doing the test. And I'm not saying I'm looking for doing something so dramatically frequently that it's you know overkill, um, and I'd even be considering looking at you know as part of it if it were deemed to be something viable to incorporate into um, possibly a budget process where we as the board of health are you know assuming um, you know a cost element for having this type of a thing done so that the resident or business owner isn't you know, paying for it, but what they're going to get out of it is the confirmation that, hey, my my drinking water is good. Or if there's a problem, geez, you, ought, you ought to be aware. You know? Uh, you know, I, I think that my feeling about that is that to do a lot of um, uh, promoing and maybe have a special day that says, you know, uh, this would be the day to test your well or that, you know, something that you can do, you know, um, to, to make people understand how important it is, it, you know, especially, uh, you know, in like, like what we're doing at the um, Worcester Health Foundation is we'll be doing a lot of, they'll be doing a lot of um, advertising and promoing and, you know, like even at the, um, I can remember, um several years ago at the fair you know the fair that we have the town fair we would set up a uh, a board of health table with all of these things and send out you know to give out documents and explain why this was important and blah 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 you know education i guess i'm saying education yeah tom fichter maybe it's possible to incorporate that uh, in some sort of a uh, educational packet, um, either at Hazardous Waste Day or the day that we work with the is it the green team that we talked about working with? Yeah. Um, you know, maybe it's possible to set something up uh, to kind of get people's attention. Um, I know I find in the in in the past that a lot of people that grew up with city water um, don't know a lot about their wells until they have a problem with them. The pump fails or the water turns ugly looking or something like that. And they, they sort of get a, an education because of the emergency that they're in uh, as to where their well is and how it works and the whole bit. Um, I mean, as far as testing the quality of the water within the town, we do have public water supplies. We do, um, yeah. So the, the public water supplies do report to us. That's correct. Yeah, we, we, uh, so, we're made aware of any testing. Right, that so we have, 
we do have not a, a, a big blanket, but we do have sort of a blanket of information based on how those public water supplies are doing. Uh, and, you know, they, they're throughout the town. So that, that's probably the barometer that would tell us how the water in town is doing overall. Um, and that's probably what we have to work with at this time. Mm. Um, we, we may have another uh, um, item too, um, going back to the uh, states, the Senate's um, filed, uh, you know, filed bill. Um, they do have a provision in their um, document that uh, provides the Board of Health to, uh, to loan money out. Um, so they would, so there, there'd probably be some sort of grant involved in it for people to test their wells or even to upgrade uh, to have, uh, to have a treatment device put on their wells, uh, private wells. So there may be a provision out there saying, hey, go test your well, we have grant money available. Uh, to do so there you so, go but but that's who knows when that's going to be this is just filed uh january 20th so um so who knows how long this this will take to uh to go through um through the legal procedures but maybe what we could do with this new uh newspaper you know the new newspaper that came did did you get that paper in the mail yeah the new free free press there right yeah yeah maybe maybe yeah. we could uh, you know draft a little document that says you know like the board of health news kind of thing you know and and every month or so do something like hey did you check your you know do you know where do you, have you tested your water blah 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 you know something like that yeah yeah i wouldn't want to education know. Yeah, ed education. I wouldn't want to, you know, beat it into people per se. I wouldn't want to over advertise or, you right. know, become, you know, you know, just you know, periodic. Um, yeah, info. info. Yeah, is is a good idea. Yeah, I'm yeah. all for that. Yeah. All right, all, all good ideas. Um, nothing that at this time we need to put in the regulations themselves. Right. Um, but I'm sure Jack has taken notes uh, so we can, uh, you know, try to periodically um, implement those suggestions. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. All right. So let's move on. Um, okay. Well, alterations. Um, again, I think this makes sense. Like pump repairs. Replacements of the water line. You know, some of these are already adequately regulated. Um, like the water line could be um, inside of the house would be a plumbing. Um, but you know, well, you know, pump repairs uh, should not need a permit to do so. It, they should hire right. the contract to go ahead and get it done. Yeah, that would definitely slow the process down. Right. When you when you have no water. Right. Exactly, right. that happens. <laughs> um, I did. I think I had. I did add modifications to the well structure. All the components is considered an alteration. Um, so if they have to, I'm not sure why I put this in there, but I'm wondering if they have to repair um, any of the casing which means it would have to dig down to do so. Um, I think this also means if they're doing any um, redeveloping. So if they're redeveloping the well, then then I would think that's, that's a permit. So if they were going to deepen the well by drilling uh, or hydrofract the well? Yeah. Then they'd have to get a permit. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Or even uh, geothermal, maybe. Okay. So, 
Yeah, so it looks like you're just trying to highlight this as an example of what the definition of alteration is. Yes. Yeah. All right, and the last section stays the same. Five point one. Well, uh, ten, yeah, five, yeah, ten. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, so we have said said conditions. Uh, maybe add uh, D notices or other notifications. So yeah, at the, at the um, for the conditions for the final decision of the board, I just added D notifications or, or or other other forms of notification the board feels necessary. Okay, where are we looking at now? Uh, five ten uh, three. Okay. Um, after uh. Yeah, that doesn't make sense, does it? Um, issuance of conditional private well certificate. Uh, upon receipt and review of the above documents, the board shall make a final decision on the application for a private well certificate. The final decision shall be in writing and shall comprise of one of the following. And then I added, uh, so it has issuance, deny, or a conditional private well certificate with with those conditions which the board deems necessary. Right. So I just added deed notification or other forms. Yep, that's good. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So All right, so that was about an hour or so. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I would say based on what we have left and the few notes we made along the way, maybe one more, one more session and we'll get this in print. Yeah, maybe we should invite somebody. Can do. Um, to the next meeting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's, you know, a couple of companies that do a lot of drilling in town. We can reach out to, uh, to them and. See who wants to appear at on. You want to do our next meeting, Tom? Uh, yeah. What's what's the next meeting? Uh, it'll be most likely two weeks from today. Wednesday the fifteenth. Okay, the fifteenth. Isn't that our day that we're doing with the board of uh, the conservation though? Isn't that no? If you, um, I sent out an email because that's going to be another topic for tonight's discussion. Um, Dan Byer cannot make it, so we're looking trying to get Dan Byer in on the meeting. Oh, great. Okay, I, I didn't, I didn't see that. So that's one we're looking to maybe do on a Tuesday, Jack, but we haven't heard back yet. Is that right? Correct. Tuesday, the twenty-first of February. All right. So, okay. Tom so Ryder, two weeks from today would most likely be okay. Yes. All right. So I'll I'll um, draft these up and then I'll check back with Jack. Make sure that we cover this up. All right. Very and then, good. Uh, and then we'll work on. Um, you know, I th I think someone's going to need more than just uh, a week to take a look at this. So maybe we'll. Um, if you know anybody um, who is interested, uh, a well driller. I, I've talked to a few well drills that seemed interested already. Oh, OK. I just I just have to remember, you know, it was a while. It was a little while ago, so I'll just have to remember who they were. <laughs> well, the one that I usually work with a lot is Jimmy from uh, Richardson Wells and Pumps. OK, yes. OK, so I can reach out to Jimmy. I, I worked with him as well. OK, all right, so let, let, let's shoot to get Tom Ryder back in here in two weeks. And uh, in the meantime, let's uh, say thank you to him and let him uh, get some rest. Thank, thank you, Tom. Tom, okay. All Tom right. thank you very Thanks, much. Hopefully Tom. one more session will get this finished up. All Good right. Good, Good night. Nice job. Good, Good, night. Good night. Thank you.
All right, folks. Good job. Next item on the agenda. Appointment of Danielle Edmonds as Menden's animal inspector. Jack, do we need to take a formal vote on this? Yes, I need a motion and a formal vote from the all three members, please. All right. Board members. I move that we um, appoint Danielle Edmonds as our men, the, the, as the Menden animal inspector. Now I'll second the motion. All right. Oh, effective date. Yeah, we need an effective date. Uh, I'd put uh, effective date. Give me February one second. First. Yeah, make it now, February 1st. I'll second that. All those in favor? Tom, aye. aye. Joyce, Alan, aye. Alan, aye. Joyce, aye. All right, we have a guest CW with the hand raised. CW? Is this going to replace Kevin Sullivan? Uh, no, Kevin Sullivan is the animal control officer. Danielle Edmonds would be replacing Maximum uh, Carbone, who was the animal inspector. Okay, so, Kev so Kevin's going to stay as is. And so we pay a lot of money and they don't do their job. Um, that's not from the BOH budget for the animal control officer. Does the Board of Health have any say on that? Well, I don't I, understand. I don't I've understand been trying to get means. my dog licenses, and he doesn't show up to inspect so that I can get my dog licenses so you can make tax money. Well, I, I do believe, um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that uh, animal control is the oversight of that is through the select board. Yes. I, correct, I, Alan, and Joyce, am I saying that right? I believe so. I mean, we have worked with Kevin in the past. There is some overlap, but the Board of Health doesn't direct the animal control officer. We direct the animal inspector, which is a, okay. a separate thing. So the animal inspector is if you had farm animals and all that, but Correct. the animal control officer who is supposed to show up and inspect for kennel licenses doesn't do his job. So perhaps you ought to talk, yeah. talk to the board of selectmen. The select board. I've, talked, I've talked to everyone. I've already done it. So we're paying two people for animal control. No, well, I, will, I will say the job, the job functions are, are a little bit different. Um, there is a little bit of overlap, but I, I believe the responsibilities are different in the job in the job roles. But I'm sorry to hear that you're not, you know, you're you're having an issue and it doesn't sound like it's being um, addressed. That's that's no, I, I would hate to, to hear that. What the difference is between him and her? What's what are their job responsibilities that differentiate to pay two people? Alan? Yes, ma'am. Um, I would gladly provide you the animal inspector's job description. Um, if you were to give Jack your email, we could email that to you. Uh, you may also find it uh, very possibly on our website. I will say that the only overlap that I know of off the top of my head is if you were to report a dog bite, the animal inspector that comes under the Board of Health would handle the paperwork and the quarantine process for a dog bite. But other than that, they would not respond to anything involving dogs, cats, um, which is the animal control officer who doesn't come under our umbrella, unfortunately. Uh, no, but limited. that's what I'm trying to explain is I don't understand why we have two people that are, I mean, Menden doesn't have many farms anymore, so you got dog issues and rooster apparently problems, but I don't, I, I want to understand the difference between the two positions that we're paying for. 
my suggestion at this point would maybe pull up the job descriptions for each and compare them. Um, the only contact that I've had with Mr. Sullivan was very pleasant. Uh, no, I'm not saying anything. I'm not being derogatory about it uh, of the person. I'm just saying we're paying for two. What's the difference? I can only speak on the animal inspector. Well, but, I think I think predominantly um, but, you kind of touched on a little bit uh, the, the farm animal aspect. People for a job that one person could do. Because we, we, background, my stepfather was the animal control officer, which involved going out and rounding up cows when we had farms in town. So we've got two different, he was the, you know, like when it came to a dog, that was a, that was a dog officer. There were two different positions and they seem to be mixed. And there's really no one doing their job at this point. Because we don't have a bunch of farm animals anymore that are escaping. So I'm not so sure why we have two positions. That's, that's all I'm saying. Because that is what the state requires. The state requires us to have an animal inspector and the selectmen to carry on the other requirements. The animal control officer. Correct. Well, if they don't do their job, then you should report that. I have several times. Alan Greenberg? Ma'am, unfortunately, the, the animal control officer does not come under the Board of Health umbrella. So I don't know what else to say to you on that issue. As far as... No, I'm just trying to understand the difference, but in in the town you know like it was pretty simple before they would deal with the cows and the horses and stuff and the other people would deal with the dogs but now it's it's turned into this different we've got two different positions but what are they inspecting our, our animal inspector goes out based on the state and does an annual inspection it's called the barn book of right the all the agricultural related animals in town. Right. And while they're there, if they see anything that needs to be done differently, or they can give the owner of livestock any suggestions to protect the health of the animals and the health of the public, they do so. Right. I've, I've only had good experiences. I have horses. I've only had good experiences with I'm not uh, the animal anyone. inspectors coming out. I'm not saying anything about any person individually. I'm just saying that we got an animal control officer that's in charge of roosters. Like, I mean, the dog officer, like, shouldn't that be the animal control officer? If we're talking about roosters, we got all these things like dogs, roosters. Somebody's going to step up and divide it well like we, ha we have divi we have divided it exactly you've, you've just made a good point for yourself we that's have divided it and, it, point, and that's the way Roger's no daughter this is west did all this it was divided but when right. you if something happens in town you get put onto this person that never shows up so it it, it seems like we're paying a lot of money for two people I, I so think that's the requirements, uh, Carol. It, 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 so, it sounds like you're describing two situations. Um, one, it sounds like you're, what I'm gathering is you're very unhappy with the performance of the animal control officer. Would, would we agree on that? It's, yes. Yeah. Okay. Un understood. Um, and in uh, addition to that, you may, I, also, you may also be wondering why there's a separation of duty between yes, the two because what you're saying is that there's a reduction in the farming element of the town so it sounds like you might be wondering why those two roles can't be incorporated into one is that correct
She's muted. Know. You're muted, Carol. Oh, she's muted. Yeah. Well, it just seems to me with the the minimum, I mean, this was a farm town. There were farms everywhere. So I understood it from that perspective. But now we've got two people we're paying. And it just seems crazy to me when if you're going to go animal control officer, like dog officer, whatever it is, we're paying a lot of money for two people. There, there aren't many farms left to inspect. Well, I can and I can understand that that view. Um, it's not necessarily limited to quote unquote farms. Um, I think what Alan was indicating is that there are there's an agricultural element to properties that aren't necessarily defined as a farm, but they have an agricultural element that falls under the animal inspection. Um, I understand that. I grew up with that. There were two, but there were a lot of farms back then. So we're paying a lot of money for two people to supposedly come and inspect things. And I'll just tell you right now, I have tried for two years to pay for my dog licenses, but someone doesn't show up because I have five dogs. I have to have that kennel inspection and they don't show up. So two years, five dogs. Um, I, and I, go down to the town hall and say, I'm trying to license my dogs, but I can't get it done. Alan? Does that make any sense? Ma'am? Yes? Ma'am, this is Alan Greenberg. Um, what I'd like you to do for me, if you could, because I I'm more than willing to look into this for you, is please uh, give your contact information to Jack. If you want to send the Board of Health an email and do it that way so that it's private, that would be fine. And I'm understanding from your last statement that you're having a problem for the last two years licensing as a kennel because you have five dogs. So I, yep. I understand that. And you've been reaching out to the dog, uh, the animal control officer, Mr. Sullivan, and have not got a response. If, right. if you state all of that in an email, send it to the to Jack's attention at the Board of Health. Um, and please, to the Board of Select, the Select. I've board. already, I, I have. More, I will be more than happy to look into that for you and try to provide you some form of relief. No, it's not, it's not a hardship or anything. I'm just saying that if I can't even get one person to do their job, we're paying for another animal control. There's hardly any farms left. Right, but I'm, I'm willing to help you with your situation. If, if I can, I'm willing to take a, you know, an honest effort to try to help you. Our job as the Board of Health is to help people comply. So even though this doesn't come completely under the Board of Health umbrella, I'm more than willing to try to help you comply. That's great. I just wanted to step in and say we're paying a lot of money for animal control. Okay, I have no idea what the animal control office salary is, ma'am. Hmm. Are you familiar with the salary structure on the animal inspection side? Out of curiosity. Who are we talking to, me? Yes, I'm sorry. And I'm sorry, what's your first name? The, in the booklet that they put out that what they're making that's what i saw okay i just wasn't sure if you were if you if you knew um specifically what the salary was for the position oh no i, I i've seen it and it is what it is but you're getting paid and you don't do your job so that's all i'm saying no understood. Yeah. i'm just asking about the animal inspection side as alan indicated Unfortunately, I don't have any information on the salary for the animal controller. I was just curious no, I'm if you asking why we need an animal inspector if we have there's not many farms around. So what are they inspecting? Oh, understood. And I think it was kind of pointed out that it, it, it it's a, it's a requirement at the state level that there be a separation of the two. Yeah. I get that, but it seems kind of crazy to pay for two people. All right, in, in closing out, ma'am, 
uh, again, I, I'm more than willing to try to take a stab at helping you out because that's what the Board of Health tries to do. We try mm -hmm. to help people comply. And even though this doesn't come under our umbrella, if you send an email to Jack's attention at the Board of Health, um, I will take a stab at trying to help the disconnect between uh, Mr. Sullivan and getting out to inspect your kennel. All right, Jack, I think we can move on. All right, next agenda topic is the uh, review and approval of the Board of Health meeting minutes. Yeah, which you nicely included in our packet. Has they, everyone had an opportunity to, to review those? I, I have. I, I can't vote on them, so. Ah, that's Sorry. right. She wasn't on board at the time. Ah, all right. So I'll Sorry, step kids. down. <laughs> I'll step down and make a motion to approve the minutes for the meetings of 511, 525, 68, and 62922. And I'll second the motion proposed. All right, Jack, you got it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jack. Okay. Topics not reasonably anticipated. I know we have some uh, other people uh, that have dialed in. Uh, anybody want to bring anything up to the Board of Health's attention? All right. Fellow board members, anything you'd like to discuss? I do want to. I do want to bring up um, that email that I sent out about the emergency. Let's see here. Yeah, February seventh. Yeah, the February seventh email that's going to be coming to you from the state for the emergency uh, preparedness email. I just want to make you guys aware of it that it is coming next week, and if everybody knows what it's about. Okay, well, and that'll be that'll be via email. Correct. I don't I don't know what it's about. Uh, well, since you're part of the Board of Health, uh, the town of Menon has listed you as the member as the emergency management team for the public health emergencies. Okay. So whenever so whenever they send out an email for an emergency, they send it out to I believe ten of us, uh, the Board of Health, uh, DPW, the Select Board, uh, Police Chief, Fire Chief. Uh, superintendent of schools, just to make sure that the, we all are getting aware of what's going on if there is an emergency in the town of Menden. So they just want to make sure that you get the email and you respond to it so that you are active in the system. Okay. And that will be coming on the 7th of this month. Yeah, so that's Tuesday. Yeah. We do have Tisha Lowe with their hand raised. Tisha. She's muted. Unmute. Let me see here. I think here she comes. Tisha, are you there? No, she's sending a chat, so I guess her microphone's not working. Her question oh, is. I would like to ask who or what is in place to discover what sort of work is being done on the outlet at the end of Taft Avenue. And I think she's From probably referring to the, the latest uh, developments with the uh, stormwater drainage. Yeah, the, yeah, the right. drain issue to help discover pollutants. Anybody? I, yeah. I did some emails on that. Uh, I, I can't recall the details of those emails, uh, but they discussed the um, different catch basins and the sumps and which ones were going to be combined during the Route 16 reconstruction. Uh, again, I, I can't recall the details. 
Yeah, I do know that uh, we were informed, uh, Tisha, that um, it appears from an operational perspective, there had been some recent work done on that drainage area, and it had been determined that the um, the outlets are, are are operational the way they should as far as the sump part goes and collecting sediment and what have you. Um, however, there is a plan in the works for redirecting outflow uh, of the stormwater away from the lake, um, where it's going to be redirected to, I think what was described to the north, Jack, is that, do yeah. I have that correct? I believe so. Is that the email from Lonnie? Yes, correct. The one from Lonnie. All right, let me open that up. One of our um, select board members, Tish, has been working with um, uh, DEP on it, and he recently provided us an update um, on that today. So that's what Jack is looking up. Was it DEP or DOT? I'm sorry, you're right. DOT. My okay. bad. DOT, thank you. What, um, what's so the there... letter? <laughs> what's in a letter? What's a vowel? <laughs> Um, so you can expect that there will be adjustments made to that stormwater flow to, to factor in um, and take into account the, the experiences that are happening with regard to the lake. All right. He, I do have the email open. Uh, he said he received an update from DOT uh, regarding the drainage of Old Taft slash Route 16. The catch basin was already replaced and is working as expected. Although this area is not part of the Route 16 upgrade, there will be improvements to the west as part of the upgrade project that will improve storm water flow away from the lake. Additional catch basins will be installed as part of the upgrade and will direct the storm water to the north side of Route 16. And that was the end of his email. And uh, Trisha just uh, added another uh, chat element. She's asking if. Uh, Will the email be made available to the public before future work and variances could be approved? I think that'd be a Lonnie question. Well, it's, well, yes, I suppose it's a it's a communication uh, at the town level to to town officials. Um, I would deem it as being public, public. information. Yeah, so, so Tish is also asking about um, how to know where's north. So has a question about the direction. What does that mean? But when they talk about going north, where does it, where does it go? Just a good question, Tisha. I guess we need to get some um, more specifics uh, from Lonnie. Toward, we could... Towards Upton. Toward where? <laughs> <laughs> That's our sister city. Be kind to our sister city. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, that, that's OK. That. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. So, uh, Tisha, we can do some more. I can I can do a reach out to Lonnie and try to get some more particulars. I think you just that. logged in. I think Lonnie just logged in. Oh, hey, hey everybody. I saw the chats. Hey, Lonnie. I, I'm at the selectment, but I, I ran out for a sec. I saw a bunch of chat stuff going on. Uh, just hoping I can answer a couple of questions if you have it. Yes, yeah, so, uh, we have a caller, um, Lonnie, that is unfortunately has a microphone issue, so she's using chat to communicate mm -hmm. some things. And it kind and of I started with, yeah, uh, can you see the chat I, okay? Yeah, I saw, I saw the, the chat, and I, I believe it's Tish, I'm going to assume it's Tish. It's that, Tish, I'm yeah. Correct. And if there's, if I can give her, if she needs information, we can't, that's not being relayed tonight, I can always go over with her offline tomorrow or later tonight, if that works for her. But anyhow, um, if you can just, I, I'm on my phone right now. If you could just rehash the questions, I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Yeah, so essentially, we were just kind of just trying to describe to her the latest communication we had from you with regard to, um, you know, the operation currently of the outfalls, um, currently with regard to the flow, and that it, it appears that <clears throat> from what's being reported <clears throat> to us from DOT that, you know, they're functioning properly from a sump perspective and that you have the, um, the, the drains are gathering the sediments accordingly, but it was noted that uh, there's a plan uh, in the works to kind of do a redirect of the outflow from from the lake to what was described as to the north. And sure. uh, Tish was just wondering what that meant by to the north. Where does Absolutely. it actually go? Yeah. 
Okay, so I, I'll, I'll sum it all up real quick. The I, I spoke to um, his first name's Tom, last name's eluding me at the moment. Spoke with him at the regarding the drain at Old Taft Ave, which is two drains that that go into the one sump. Excuse me, uh, and there it is a catch basin that separates sediment that is you know uh, the vac trucks or the the clam trucks will come pick up. The, the one that was there before, which we were originally told was the same one, well, sorry, which we were originally told was the one that is there now, had been replaced since, you know, the, uh, not since we talked, but since those, those folks that told me that it was, it had a plate on it and the sediment was actually going into the lake at that point. I don't know if, if some of you may remember, uh, it was a uh, 10 years ago at this point, maybe the, the sediment had gotten so bad in the lake, we had to dredge it out. There was a t down at that corner of t old tap dab in the Marina. There the was, cove. yeah. in the cove, there was just this big, huge s swale of, of silt from the road. So when they dredged that, we dredged that all out. And in between then and now they have replaced the catch basin with the correct catch basin. So that's why we haven't seen that issue. Uh, and I just wanted to, you know, again, we were talking about, that one specifically that's why it asked so there doesn't need to be any repair there the second portion that of what we we're talking about was the the route 16 project that's uh, being done from hartford Ave all the way to hopedale doesn't touch this catch basin but pro, uh, between taft Ave and old taft Ave, <clears throat> there is going to be uh the ca catch basins on in that section will be fixed and it's, they're going to be adding additional ones to collect additional stormwater that will now drain to the north side of of Route 16. The north side of Route 16 being that wooded area, if you're heading towards Uxbridge, to your right-hand side. So the opposite side of the lake. Uh, and they'll, they're building a detention basin in there, which will then catch this additional stormwater runoff and reduce the amount that's actually flowing down to the one to the lake. I hope yeah. that makes sense. Tisha, does that, uh, we know your microphone is uh, not functional, so we, th we, th we assume you heard Lonnie there. Oh, look like she's gonna send a chat along you. Let's see what she says. And I can also, it, it, that there's no problem sharing that document. It's got some pictures in it and it's got the one portion of the 25% plan showing for, for the Route 16 project showing the section there. Uh, and I'd be more than happy to review that with Tish if she would like to, to go over it uh, at any time. Great, yeah, her last one, <clears throat> she was referencing why not public, but it obviously that's gonna be made public for her. Let's see what she- Oh, it's gonna be made public. We, I just received the email, I wanna say yesterday, that's when I forwarded it to everybody. Yeah, so she just says pictures would be amazing to help people, I believe. Uh, Lonnie, sure why thing I can forward a copy. Tish, I, if Tish needs my email, I'll throw it in the chat. Okay, great, Lonnie. Yeah, Tish, uh, Lonnie's going to throw his email in the chat for you, and you can feel free. He's uh, more than willing to kind of have a direct one-on-one uh, -on -one with you to give you everything you everything you're looking for. Lonnie, while you're on the line, I have a um, question when you have a minute. Yeah, go right ahead. All right. Um, we had a caller uh, call in. Uh, we appointed Danielle Edmonds as our animal inspector tonight, officially. She's been filling in for us. So effective February 1st, she is our official uh, animal inspector. We, we had a resident call in. Uh, her initials were CW, I believe. Uh, she has five dogs. She's been trying to get a kennel license renewal, it sounds like, for two years and is having a problem with the animal control officer responding, which would be Mr. Sullivan. Does Mr. Sullivan come under the direction of the Board of Selectmen? 
uh, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Have her reach out to us. Um, and I don't know it seems strange that 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 she was having trouble. If she reaches out to the board to um, you know our office, that we will uh, we're the ones that deal with the applications and everything. The only thing that um, uh, the animal inspector, uh, sorry, the animal control officer will do is just go out for an inspection. And does she? Ha- I thought it was over six. It was over six dogs to get a kennel. Thing. I thought it was over. Th- I thought it was three or more. Yeah, I feel well, like we might have changed. The, the, other, yeah. the other thing that she's really concerned about is that we're paying for two people to what she considers is the same job and we're, they're, we're wasting our money. So that, that was what, her, I think what, that was her main what, concern with us. What are the two, what are the two people? The, we pay the animal inspector and you pay the animal control officer. <laughs> and they should, she, one should be doing the same job, two jobs. Oh, that I mean, I feel like they're two completely different jobs. Uh, yeah, that, I, yes. We we told her to speak to you and you know to call not oh, okay. you in particular well, but the select board and and discuss that. But yeah, you know, and, and I, I did offer where she sounded very frustrated with the situation. I did yeah. offer that if she were to email the you know her concerns and everything to the board of health to Jack's attention that I was going to try to follow up and find out what was going on uh, and try to help her because she says, you know, this has been going on for two years. She had a relative that used to do the job. She doesn't understand why we're wasting all this money. She sounded very, very frustrated. Yeah. I, if you if offering you, to try to help her, I, I couldn't go any further than that. So yeah, I if try. you if if she reaches out to Jack, please circle me into the uh, into the the meetings and the conversation. I'll, I'll work with you, Alan. We'll, we'll get anything anything we can get help get done for. We'll get done. Okay, but we're on the same page. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna go back upstairs to the budget meeting because it's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Have everybody. Good time. Speaking Thanks, of money. Money. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, anybody else uh, that's dialed in have any comments or anything they'd like to talk about? All right, very good. Let's set our next meeting, folks. The only thing I'd, I'd mention, and not that it's a big deal, I, I know we were going to talk to Tom about it, Jack. That that uh, other address that came up today. Do you remember the one, Jack? Yeah, I'm sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, 37 Blackstone. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll reach out to him tomorrow. I already sent him an email uh, before we left work today, so I'm just waiting to hear back from him. Okay. Uh, so before we set our next BOH meeting, did everybody so trying to get the Concom and Dan Byer and everybody else? Does Tuesday work on the 21st for everybody? Yeah, works for yeah. me. Fine with me. And it will it will be all in person at the uh, Upper Town Hall. Okay. Just to let everybody know. And is that a BOH meeting or a CONCOM meeting? Uh, it's going to be both. Opening it up to uh, Wayne Phipps and anybody else who wants to join in. Right. Dan Byer. And... I think we'd have to determine the, the host. How we want to, how it should be hosted. I know it's a it's a different night for both groups, and I understand right. it's kind of a multi. To look at it as a multi board, I guess we could approach it that way. Well, either that, or you know, Tom, I know in one of our last conversations uh, at a meeting about the the additional testing, et cetera, uh, you expressed an interest in the board of health taking the lead, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I have no problem as the the board of health uh sponsoring the meeting that was up until i found out how much extra money it was going to cost us that's all right <laughs> you're having a budget no. meeting right now tom i'm being facetious it's really not and, it's really and, not that much tom, extra money as you know i'm i'm more than uh mm. be happy with you you know running the meeting <laughs> <laughs> so by all means take the lead <laughs> yeah i, I um yeah, you know, 
we did want to, I, I'm all in favor of that. I'm all in favor of having a direction and, and um, but I would like to include the, all the related parties. I think CONCOM is, uh, is a integral part of Absolutely. this particular discussion. I think it's uh, without a doubt in their wheelhouse. Um, and again, I, I'm kind of being facetious about the cost. I really don't believe that um, the added cost for what we're looking to do is really that much more that we can't uh, make that happen. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to have uh, the, the Board of Health sponsored joint meeting on the Tuesday the 21st. That's proposed. That is proposed. I have not heard back from CONCOM. Yep, that's fine. And our next Board of Health meeting is going to be two weeks from tonight. <clears throat> Which is February 15th. 6.30. Remote. Joyce. Yeah, that's good for me. <laughs> Sorry. And hopefully we're going to be able to block off enough time to finish up those well regs. And we're going to have uh, someone who's a well driller hopefully chime in and give us yep. uh, their opinion. Yep. All right. Cool. Everybody good with that? Yep. Sounds good. Good with, good with me. Awesome. Again, thank you so much for everyone's participation. All right. Uh, motion to adjourn. To adjoin or to adjourn? Uh, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> I make motion we adjourn. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you and good night. Thank good you night. all. Good night. Good job.